All right, here we are in poem three of Crow. You notice, of course, those first two poems were really about Crow's origin, um, the legends of his birth, how he was begotten. Um, and now we have the third poem, Examination at the Womb Door. Once again, as with each of the initial poems we've read, you know, I, I think one of the best skills I can try to teach you guys about how to read poetry is looking at its structure before you even read it. Um, and as I look at the structure of this poem, notice a few things stand out to me right away. Um, one is that almost all of these lines start with who and they start with questions, okay? And then they all end with death in italics until at the very end here, it's no longer death, it's something else, okay? So I need to, uh, to think about that structure as I read this poem. Um, the title is very informative. There is a kind of examination happening at the womb door. Um, so the womb door is, of course, the, the entrance into the world, your, your exit from the womb and your entrance into the world. So this is Crow. Well, let's see. Let's see what else we find. But this is an examination at the womb door. We notice that all these initial questions are about who owns right? Um, and it certainly seems like we're talking about Crow, who owns these scrawny little feet, death, this bristly, scorched-looking face, death, the still-working lungs, death, utility coat of muscles, death, unspeakable guts, death, questionable brains, death. So look at, uh, we once again, very similar to what we saw in Two Legends, we have this catalog of physical body parts, um, notice some of the adjectives that go along with the nouns. We have unspeakable guts, questionable brains, messy blood, minimum efficiency eyes, wicked little tongue, and occasional wakefulness. All of these parts of crow are owned by death, right? Um, everything about him is owned by death, okay? And now here we get a break from that pattern we saw. Um, the question is now, given, stolen, or held pending trial? And then the, the answer is held. Uh, and notice the answer is put on its own line rather than as the conclusion of uh, this line. So it sort of breaks with that pattern that we saw in those first uh, that first series of questions. This is, I think, a difficult stanza to um, to understand, I'll, I'll do my best here to try to make sense of it with you. Um, I, I think if you're if you're talking about all these things that are part of Crow, were these things given? Were they stolen, or are they being held pending trial? And the answer is that they're being held pending trial. So we're still in a state where it's almost like we're not sure. If Crow is ready to pass into life, um, he is being held pending trial. His body is being held. Okay, now we go back to the same pattern of the who owns. But now it's no longer parts of Crow. It's um, the whole rainy, stony earth is owned by death. All of space is owned by death. And now we go from that... Um, those universe or those larger uh, physical objects, we now go from there to the abstract. And the question is no longer who owns, but who is stronger than. Stronger than hope, stronger than the will, stronger than love, and stronger than life. And the answer to all of those is that death is stronger than all of those. But, we have a transition word here, but... Who is stronger than death? Me, evidently. Pass, crow. So, here's what I think is going on in this poem, then. Crow is being examined. And crow is the one who's answering death in all these, in, to all these questions. Okay, so you can think about the examination in a couple ways. The examination certainly 
sounds like a physical exam, like a medical exam, but it also sounds like an exam as in the sense of a test. Like before you enter the world, do you have the knowledge to enter the world? Do you know who owns everything in this world? And what owns everything is death. Um, and death is stronger than anything else in the world, even the abstract, the hope, the will, the love, and the life. But something is stronger than death, and it's me, evidently. And notice that. So, in, And then the, the questioner says, pass, crow, as in you pass the test. Now you can pass through the womb door, and crow is directly addressed there. Um, so look at that response of me, evidently. Um, in what sense is crow stronger than death? Well, he's stronger than death insofar as he lives now. Um, and I think, I think it's also a really interesting uh, adverb to have there, evidently, right? It's almost like, well, I guess I'm stronger than death. I'm here, aren't I? The evidence of my senses tells me I must be stronger than death because I'm not dead. I think one really interesting pattern we're seeing in these first three poems is that for all the blackness, the emptiness, the nothing, the never, 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 the death, there is still a kind of triumph in each of these opening poems. And that triumph is that crow lives and flies, that crow uh, screams for blood or anything, and that crow is stronger than death. So I think the overall idea to get from these opening poems is, you know, it's a universe that is ruled um, by blackness, by emptiness, by nothing, by never, by death. And yet in the midst of all that is the triumph of the living creature, crow. <laughs>